So, Mr. President and Mrs. Mermaid, we have done the world's premiere conversation of a head of state with a mermaid under the water. How does it feel? Uh, fantastic. It was uh, really, um, you know, something that's, uh, you could say, out of this world. Uh, and, uh, yeah, amazing to be able to talk uh, instead of just using hand signals. <laughs> right. And about you? I, I still trying to digest because it was, um, you know, next to the clam and while all these fishes came in and then I'm there and I'm underwater with the world leader, with Mr. President of Palau and talking about what matters the most, you know, and what should matter the most to the all world leaders, but just breathing in and feeling that changing the world was it's unsurreal still i'm still digesting what just happened it's kind of um when when you know you're setting a tone for the next generations you're nervous a little bit too but but the conversation what we had especially regarding of saving the oceans made feel so powerful empowered and inspired so, so what would your be your key conclusion to the world when you say, okay, that's what the world really should remember from our experience? Well, I think uh, most importantly, how important the ocean is to us, to every one of us. You know, we, we always say that the ocean is our second lung, but yet we pollute it, we don't take care of it, and we expect it to be healthy. And so by having this technology, making it more comfortable for people to explore and understand the ocean, I think will help them understand the importance of the ocean and want to love it even more. Because that's what we want to do, is we want to unlock that love for the ocean. And actually the ocean loves us. Mm. So, so often humans are not opening their eyes to, to be able to open the heart to receive the love and today because everything went so well and you know everything the fact that we were under there the the light was perfect i could see the president i could uh, hear him his voice to come through through this technology just reminds us again that the love and support comes from ocean if we accept it and letting the love to come in they say that when there is a lot of love there is a lot of potential you know so what uh, i think we learn from your experience is you sense the love you actually had a fish following you for the past three days right he yes. didn't let you go no he was he, in love he, with was, you. he was still there he was still there all the way yeah. to the end yeah and, he, he, do with and he's like he he's there watching and blowing bubbles while we are breathing and talking to each other and that's what people forget this they always want something but they forget to breathe and and i think the the fish was there to tell the world the message breathe and let the love to come mm. and, and mr president what's the potential for a small nation like palau this this you're the first one the first nation in the world to have people talking under the water. Uh, the first time a president makes statements uh, live uh, from under the water. What does it mean for Palau? Well, you know, we, we are an ocean nation. Uh, we uh, are known for scuba diving. Uh, and uh, I think we, we believe the best in the world. And we want people to come and experience that uh, uh, underwater experience with us. But I think sometimes one of the limitations is being able to communicate underwater. So this technology will allow those divers uh, to come and be able to dive and like I said, be underwater and say, the shark is over there, the manta ray is over there, and be able to communicate with each other instead of like tapping them on the shoulder and, and saying, oh, look this way and trying to figure that out. That's sometimes so difficult. And, and, and sometimes actually as a, as a dive guide or as bringing a friend along, they miss half of what's down there because you cannot communicate. Mm -hmm. So I think that's 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 the beauty of communication is, is being able to share uh, how we think, how we uh, care, and how we love each other. That's that's communicating, and, and hopefully through this communication, we can share the love of the ocean. The love language.
the love language. Yeah. Now, Merle, you you are very dedicated to have many little mermaids, little girls uh, having a love for the ocean. And and what I I really appreciate so much of your work is you don't say I'm going to teach you how to swim. You're basically saying I'm going to teach you how to be a mermaid. Could you just clarify what does it mean what you had today in your life mission? You know. Yeah, so number one, what I teach to the mermaids is that mermaid doesn't give up when something doesn't come out. And today we use the technology, what has been taking so long for humans to figure out, right? And it, it took humans not to give up, to have a breakthrough on technology today. And that's the same what I teach to the kids around the world. And I also teach them that they can go every day, try to do 1% better than they did yesterday. So that way they can save the oceans, they can spread and inspire mm. their, their friends to care about around them and also inspire the growth and, and resilience. And I think that's what all I teach in mermaid world was there today thanks to this technology, thanks to having Mr. President listening to the mermaid and having the mermaid support on sense that we need to give ourselves and try every day to build a climate muscle. Yeah. Because we are building a climate muscle. And, mm. and that's what we want the kids. We want the kids to drive and, and, and be inspired. But the only way to do it is sometimes through mermaid school. Okay. Great. Uh, Mr. President, you have a very small nation. One of the limitations you have, uh, you have a small population as well. Yeah. Um, um, when we have had discussions before, one of the challenges we talk about is how can we bring the great Palawans who are overseas back? You think this is something that could bring Palawans back? Uh, because we need technologies that no one has in the world. We need real pioneers here now. Well, absolutely. I think this is uh, one of those unlocking the potential the ocean has. We always talk about being a big ocean state and it's about ocean technology that we should be focused on as an ocean state. And, and, and if you unlock that potential, then you unlock economic opportunities that hopefully bring our, our children home uh, to see what we have. You know, uh, We sometimes always think that grass is greener on the other side. We should think that the ocean is bluer on the other side. And I think uh, this is what that uh, technology, this is just one of the technologies uh, that is being unlocked with the ocean and, and, and really shows the potential that's out there. Uh, the other thing that I think that uh, uh, that's important is, you know, we talk about the love of the ocean, uh, but it is under threat. It is under threat because we treat it as a garbage dump. We, we, we let plastic and everything, fertilizers, everything run into mm. it. And, and it's affecting the health of the ocean. It's killing fishes, it's, it's uh, killing corals, it's, it's uh, getting into the food that we eat. And then the latest threat, and certainly Earl and I were in, in Portugal at the, our oceans, uh, the Oceans Conference, and we launched what we call the, uh, the moratorium on deep seabed mining because that's the next big thing that everybody wants to do was it's go out there and, and, and mine the deep sea. But, you know, if we don't understand what's down there, why are we taking that risk of destroying it? There's life there. But some people say it's a barren wasteland. No, it's alive. It's, everything under the ocean is alive. We may not understand, we may not see it, but it's alive. And, and we need to understand how that's all interrelated and connected. And so that's why unlocking that this technology that's available to us and unlocking the potential the ocean has is so important for us to ensure that we uh, pass it on to the next generation better than we received it. If, would, if, would you would if, you consider setting up a little mermaid school here in Palau? I think there is so much potential. And if I may add something, what I learned from Palau and being here is that you don't need a fertilizers to grow a tree. You rock can do it. And you just have to look into rock minerals instead of fertilizers, right? And and that's again the deep sea mining is concerning because I live um also in Miami 
where they use corals for construction. And I can tell you that the moment when they stop that, going towards to having corals as a construction, that then the corals start healing. And today, after 70 years of first seahorse moved back to Miami, mm. it took 70 years to heal a seahorse. So we definitely need all the mermaid schools around the world so they can have the strength and the voice for the seahorse and educate people that we should not go in and destroy things and think this is the way to do it when we don't have the answers yet. And, and mermaids, they want to point the light to the future, like the technology did today. So I definitely, I definitely see so many mermaids around here and the, um, and truth is this, every balloon is a secretly a merman or mermaid. Is there a middle of the ocean? Well, uh, this is great. I mean, we think that uh, uh, the breakthrough technology is just using light. And, and we think that the symbolism of light is very powerful. You know, there was a book written many thousands of years ago and someone said, let there be light. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, in the book Genesis, uh, it was mm. all of a sudden we, we, we had light. But I don't think we have really understood what was said a couple thousand years ago when it was made, when this famous statement was made, let there be light. What, how would you reinterpret this, uh, uh, you know, Old Testament uh, statement of let there be light? Your light is the beginning of life, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So. And, and honestly, um, sometimes people or mermaids feel they lose the voice, but they never lost the light, their mm. spirit. So there, let there be light so the spirit can thrive. Okay. Well, I have just learned uh, from Mr. President that you think it's a good idea we try another experience and we go to the Rock Islands yes. and we're going to dive with sharks. Absolutely. I mean, sharks is such an incredible message that Palau has brought to the world by creating this first sanctuary. I mean, uh, is the shark the first one? What comes after the sharks? What else can we do with your visionary role as a tiny country to mobilize the world to go on? So we like to say that Palau uh, has always believed in the sustainable use of the oceans. It's, it's in our DNA. It's something that we practice. Uh, so for thousands of years, actually, the chiefs uh, have the system of what they call the bull, which they would section off an area and say, no fishing because you've overfished it and allow it to rejuvenate and get healthy again. And so the, really the first using modern law conservation areas in Palau was like what we call the 70 Islands, which whenever you Google Palau, you always see a picture and it's of the 70 Islands, a place in Palau where you're not allowed to go inside. So that's why you always see aerial photos uh, because it's supposed to try to keep that intact to where it was uh, uh, in millennia. So that that's just an example. But from there, we then uh, created what we call the Palau Protected Areas Network. Uh, so when every tourist comes into Palau, not only do you sign a pledge, but part of uh, your contribution to Palau is to help in the protection of those spaces. So we have created a network of protected areas all the way around Palau. And in 2015, we expanded that to include our EEZ. So 80% of our EEZ is, is a no-take zone. But Palau is, is a leader in making sure that there's no deep sea trawling, no... Um, uh, oil exploration, all of those things that harm the deep sea, we don't allow. And, and, and we further, not just talk about Palau, as a, as a good friend of mine and a conservationist said, it says, Palau doing this by itself really is not gonna make an impact. What you need to be able to do is convince the world. So Palau is a member in a, of the high level oceans panel. And one of the things that... That's the UNESCO panel. No, no, no. that's at the, at the UN. So it's got the high level panel on oceans. Palau co-chairs it with Norway. And what we've been promoting is 30% protection, 100% management of oceans. And so uh, bringing that to the world. So two things have happened. At COP28 uh, in the UAE, uh, we announced to the world, the Pacific. The Pacific countries got together and committed to 30% protection, 100% managed of our EEZs. 
to, to sh demonstrate to the world that we are committed to ocean protection because we are big ocean states and we have to lead by example. And that's what we've continued to do. But uh, soon after that, at the UNGA, the signatures began on ratifying the BBNJ Treaty. So the good news is Palau was first to ratify, and we don't know who was 60th, but it's, uh, there's a debate. But anyway, 60 <laughs> have now ratified. So that means that that BBNJ, which is uh, uh, biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction, so that means beyond our EEZs, which is 70% of the ocean space, is now going to be protected through treaty. And 60 is not, uh, well, it, it gets the treaty into force, but we need the rest of the world to come on board because we know healthy oceans, healthy planet. And uh, so I guess it's starting at home. If you, if you act locally, then you, can, then you can bring that impact globally. And I think that's, that's really what it is, is everyone individually acting can make an impact globally. And that's, that's what we're uh, promoting. So like, like mermaids, try like every, mermaids. every day 1% better to do better than you did yesterday. Absolutely. But Merle, to conclude, what are the species that you just adored being here in the water or being in Palau? What, what were the ones that you say, oh, they, they really are for I, the world I to think, be protected forever? I, I think it's so weird that the mermaid has been around the world. But so first time, the blue starfish, mm. I've seen that on the books. I've seen them on the videos, but I finally experienced that with my own heart. And I think that was that was pretty amazing. I only time when I have seen a starfish um, coming back is after um, when we had a lockdown, yeah. Miami got actually starfish back and it took two weeks to them to be there when they were gone again because human activity and while i got here and i saw the blue starfish on, your first day. on my first day that's just I, I think i was like bubbling about that for an hour because i was really excited that i saw that well thanks a lot for this most appreciated your participation in this uh, really pioneering event and so why don't we pack our bags and uh, Go to boat. the rock islands, yeah. get on a boat and do more yeah. of the I, good. I agree. Let's let's keep building the muscle, the climate muscle. Climate <laughs> muscle, I like that. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.